Warning, the following episode of Blackwell Podcast contains hella spoilers for Life is Strange. Hey everyone, welcome to Blackwell Podcast, where we love Life is Strange more than Chloe doesn't want Max to rewind that kiss. I'm Aaron, and today I'm joined by Jamie. Hello. Joey. Hey yo. Sean. Hey! And Zach. Hey everyone. And today we also have two very special guests joining us today. We have Rowan. Hello. And Danny. Hello! So uh, thank you guys for joining us today. Um, today we're going to be talking about, well, actually, uh, Jamie, did you want to give an overview of what today's episode will be about? Sure thing. Uh, so this episode has been, um, we've been in the works for this for a few months now. We'd be just wanted to mm-hmm. get it um, absolutely right. It's about um, representation in the LGBTQ plus um, community in Life is Strange and how mm-hmm. people uh, kind of connect um, that um, their lives to Life is Strange. And uh, I just want to add a real quick disclaimer. Um, so we're aware we're not we're not deaf to the fact that uh, people feel that you know the representation in the game um, could have been better, could have had more, uh, especially in season one. Um, and we, you know we're not invalidating that, uh, but this is more a celebration of kind of how it helped, how it helped people. Um, and what it had, and you know, I think it is important to be critical of the media that you love, because that's how it gets better. That's how you make it better. Um, but again, uh, not to invalidate that, but this is just more of a celebration of the good things. Um, so that being said, uh, Rowan and Danny, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourselves? Start with Rowan. Um, hello. I'm Rowan, otherwise known as Rowan Red 81 on the internets. Um, I am a disabled vet. I am trans, and I'm a member of the Life is Strange fans community as well as a fan fiction writer for Life is Strange. And uh, you've been quite prolific at that. Oh, yeah. I have taken so many breaks, though, that, like, people, if my internet had a door, it would have been broken <laughs> a long time. <laughs> Are you going to do any before the storm? No, because I'm Max and Chloe, Pricefield OTP. Represent. Yes! Represent. I hit, like, one million words worth of content earlier this year. Yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Wow. So, uh, a million, a million written words. That's crazy. I didn't think I've ever written that many words in my whole life. <laughs> Same. Not even with all your high school papers combined. No. Oh my god. No high school nightmares, please. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't have to talk about that. <laughs> Danny, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, hi everyone. Um, I'm Danny. Um, I've been a, like pretty much a fan of Life is Strange since the first episode like, was was out. Um, I'm in the community. I pretty much um, love everything about the game. And yeah, oh my. Um, um, my Twitter, everyone knows me because um, I'm always like putting price field and every everyone's like, <laughs> I'm always putting things about the game. I am obsessed with it. <laughs> I think uh, I think we've used your Warren cosplay yeah, as well. We did. Yeah, you know? I that cosplay. Oh, I didn't realize that was you. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, yeah, today we are, again, talking about kind of uh, 
you know, how, how the themes in the game and the relationship between Max and Chloe and uh, the characters kind of help, help people accept who they are, uh, maybe realize even. Um, and I think it's a really awesome thing. And I think that is like, uh, like almost just case in point and why representation in video games matter. Um, bit of a tangent. I know there was a, a naughty dog worker, um, who recently just, he tweeted about like his experience and like getting hired for naughty dog and all that. And, uh, it's a bit off topic, so, you know, I won't go into exactly what it said, but, uh, it was, it was really, really awesome. And, um, it was basically just because, like, Naughty Dog had a gay character in the game and, like, it, it spoke to him so much. And it was, like, the first time that he felt like someone like him, you know, was, was in a video game. And, uh, so he wanted, he wanted to work there and he got the job too. I and mean, he was just, when, uh, did the interview, he was very earnest about it. And, uh, I think that's awesome. And I think, uh, I think in efforts to normalize it, because it is normal, um, this should be pretty commonplace. Hmm. Um, so why don't we, why don't we start off with, uh, with how it helped you two, you know, like give us, give us your stories. Let's hear them as we gather around the campfire. <laughs> <laughs> Um, who wants to go first? Um, talk about it. Why don't you go first? Alright, um, I was about, like, when episode, um, one was released, it was, I was about, like, 17, and going through a really rough time in high school. Um, I was in it, I was in and out of different schools, um, didn't really have any friends, so pretty much... Life is Strange is the only thing that kind of brought my spirits up and playing it over and over the episodes. I remember doing that, waiting for each episode to be released. I was, like, so excited. And eventually I started um, to – I made a Twitter. For, I mean, I had a Twitter. I just never used it then. I mean, I started using my Twitter, and I started connecting with people who loved the game, mm-hmm. and I met – absolutely amazing friends that after, even ever since it, like games like was like episode one through two through through five and we're still friends and since before the storm like it's been grow everyone started to talk about it again i was getting really excited <laughs> because that game will for like life is strange will forever be in my heart that's always will be it's such yeah. a an amazing experience for sure. What about you, Rowan? Oh God. <laughs> um. Well, I was in grad school, and I was having a really tough time because of my depression and my PTSD. And I had followed the game, like the pre-release footage and trailers and being posited at the time when the first episode came out, like I really related strongly with both Max and Chloe because, you know, not to discuss high school, like we said we weren't, but in high school I was the shy cliche geek. But at the same time, I had also lost, like, very important family members around the same age Chloe had. And Chloe kind of helped me realize that I had to come, not only come to terms with who I am, but that I actually had to push for it. And so um, I didn't get a hold of hormones for my transition until the following year, but I started my transition in 2015. Okay. Wow. Well, uh, that's really cool. That's really cool that, uh, you know, it kind of, it kind of helps you push you to be your true self. 
Well, it, I think it was Ashley who said in an interview that she saw Chloe as being both flu- as being fluid in both sexuality and gender, and I could relate to that really strongly. Hmm. I didn't. I, didn't, I uh. I refuse to pay attention to any other interview that isn't ours. <laughs> <laughs> That's totally fair. <laughs> Um, I think, you know, even, even speaking for me personally, it just, uh, it was something that I always like, well, for a while I kind of like fought the notion. I thought it was just like, okay, sometimes I find guys attractive. Um, and, and then like my upbringing and all that and like where I grew up and all that is very not copacetic for that. And, uh, yeah. so <clears throat> I said the better part of my life, I was actually like kind of in denial about it. It was just one of those things that like, I never really like, I was pushed out. I was pushed away from me. Um, but then, you know, with life is strange and the community and all that, it was just, it was, it's like, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of tired of, of like not accepting it and not, and, and it helped too, you know, having like, the questioning of sexuality and stuff like the themes of that in the game. And like, we see the, the romance, like the interest growing between Max and Chloe and all that. And like, it's, I think it was just like, you know, it's, it's normal. And it was, I I feel like it was handled really well. It wasn't like hypersexualized or anything like that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree with that. Um, and so it was like, you know, it's, <laughs> it's cool to have gay thoughts. <laughs> uh, um, so, so like, yeah, like it just, it made me kind of like, this is normal. It's okay. Um, it's like nothing to be ashamed of of being this way. And, uh, so yeah, like it kind of helped me too. And even, even though like I'm like, well into my life already it still helped me come to terms with it yeah like for me the game i was in a very hard part of my life that i was not accepted for um, being who i am Mm -hmm. and i was very alone so the game made it felt like it was normalizing something that in my life it's not really accepted so like just watching my just watching the character like just seeing the game just made me like hey this is normal and i'm not alone and especially with the community is so positive yeah. that mm. everyone is pretty much is so sweet and understanding it made me like stronger for that yeah Definitely. yeah it's, um, uh, that's like good shit Mm, yeah. Like, uh, I was talking about it before, and Rowan's probably heard this a million times, because me and Rowan go way back. Uh, we met through the community. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I've spoken about it before. Um, I, uh, I was obviously, like, in a hard time as well. Like, my mom had just died. Um, but I, would like, the year before, I'd kind of come to terms with my sexuality, thanks to a, another video game, uh, The Last of Us. Um, so it was really nice and therapeutic to see these two girls who were in, in love with each other and it wasn't sexualized. It, it was really chill and, like, it wasn't, like, just, like, there to be there. It was just really natural. And you're like, hey, are these, are these two? Am I getting gay since? <laughs> or am I just making this up? Um, especially because I was in a relationship uh, with my first ever girlfriend at the time. So uh, I was very happy to see that and I showed her immediately and she fell in love with the game as well. Um, and yeah, and I've been yelling about it on Tumblr for what seems like decades and <laughs> it, it, it has a very special place in my heart because the only other time I'd seen that kind of representation that had made me feel so comfortable in who I was was when I saw Ellie and Riley in The Last of Us. So to see 
these other characters that I adored to be like me. That was really that was really nice of me as a, as a gay woman who was just coming to terms with everything and settling down and having their first girlfriend and relationship. It was it was nice. It's a, an amazing experience. It's just yeah. Hmm. Can I ask you guys, um, <clears throat> I'm just curious, uh, because I, w- when I first played Life is Strange, I was kind of oblivious to, um, you know, or I thought it was ambiguous what Max and Chloe's relationship really was. And I guess, depending upon your choices, it kind of is. But um, at what point in the game did you realize uh, that's what it was and that's what you felt like it was representing? And did how did that affect you instead of, like, knowing it from the get-go? On the um, hill at the end of episode one. Hmm. I, it took me a while because I'm really oblivious. It, it took me till episode three to realize anything. Like, I was like, wait, <laughs> oh my god. And I literally just stood up from my TV and like, oh my god, oh my god. And I'm like, <laughs> it took, I'm, yeah. I'm really oblivious. I could have, I was like, what? <laughs> I could have. <laughs> episode one but like it really came into focus the pool scene in episode oh, three and the look yeah. that Max yeah. is Chloe ah. what's that look yeah no that, that's the <laughs> those are bedroom eyes let's not let's I know not. I know people oh who scream whenever they see that moment me <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh god um no, that's the same for me, actually. Uh, like, at the end of episode one, um, because as a gay person, um, I'm very used to seeing this kind of thing in the media and then it just being, like, two gals being pals. So I didn't want to get my hopes up. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, is there, like, some romantic tension between them? And then be like, oh, no, it's just, they're just really good friends. So, but the pool scene, that the pool scene just completely... Yeah, that's what it hit me. That's, you're pretty yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty telling. Up. Oh, that scene, I'm like, I'm very emotional thinking about it. <laughs> and it wasn't until after that scene that I thought back to before they go into the locker rooms and Chloe gives her the choice. I'm like, oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Girls. Ooh, la la. <laughs> <laughs> I think, uh, I, I think it, it is about like, that budding as well and like them being comfortable again around each other because they haven't seen each other in so long and like you know the initial uh what's the word like interest is there it's just you know it takes a little bit it's it's not like because neither one of them are very even though chloe is is very brash like she's still not the like immediately like in your face um like Rachel is in Before the Storm, you know? She's like, uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Very true. Yeah. And, uh, she seems a little bit guarded in season one. Mm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, of course, Max is shy and really, like, would absolutely never, like, well, I, I say absolutely never, but she, she's not really the initiator, you know? She's not really the initiation type mm-hmm. of that thing. So it, um, it, it really is, like, neat to see it kind of happen organically and it kind of it starts out with the um oh my god i just almost quoted the killers um it it starts out (laughs) 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 but you know it starts off with like being kind of like playful and then it's like oh we're flirting and then (laughs) (laughs) yeah it's like a progression and you see it uh the scene like the journal entry, the last journal entry in Life is Strange, where Max says, is this friendship or true love? Like, my heart just exploded. Same. Oh, my God. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I'm so emotional. It's, uh, oh. it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny because Max, Max says, like, she definitely, like, feels that way towards Chloe. She doesn't know how Chloe feels about it, but... Then it's like, uh, <laughs> it's just going back to before the storm now and like reading, reading, uh, Chloe's letters to Max, where it's like all she talks about. It's like, yeah, right. uh, yeah, she's definitely into you, Max. <laughs> yeah. <but it's> like- <laughs> and I could just, I could just get the whole time, like, Chloe being like super flirtatious and like all that. And then Max <laughs> being like, 
Is she into me? <laughs> you see? Like the <laughs> VeggieTales tomato dot gif. I mean, to be fair, Max caught Chloe off guard a couple of times, like uh, in the pool scene, um, just afterwards when uh, Chloe says you look cute with uh, chemicals in your hair, and uh, Max goes, "Thanks, she would know." Chloe is caught off so guard. Yeah, so I remember that. Because <laughs> she's used to being the one who's flirty and making Max feel flustered, and then Chloe's like, "Oh shit, oh shit, she's retaliating. It's real." <laughs> and then the actual kiss too, like. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because Max is the one who achieves that. Yeah, and that's kind of like Chloe testing the waters, because Chloe, obviously Chloe doesn't know when Max feels that way to, towards her, so she's like, if I dare her and she kisses me, maybe it, it, it means yes. And I don't think she was expecting it. Obviously, right. she's yeah. expecting Max to be like, huh, no, no. <laughs> but then when she does it, Chloe's like, fuck, I'm gay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me every day, though. There was, um, <laughs> I was kind of like looking back on uh, season one footage, and um, there was a moment where, it's, um, like, if you if you're looking out for it, it's kind of obvious about Chloe, and it's whenever um, you take the money from Principal Wells's um, desk, and they, and she starts talking <gasps> oh. about strip clubs. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 yeah right. it's like, okay, I guess I should have seen <laughs> that coming. <laughs> um, I'm skipping forward a little bit here again uh, to before the song. I'm kind of making a comparison between the two. I was talking to my friend Rachel from Tumblr. Shout out to, to her. Um, uh, we were having a good old chat about Steph, as we do, and um, but we were talking about how it's really weird to kind of see Chloe in this like more like shy gay kind of questioning uh era of her life because for me personally chloe in life is strange she was this such a gay like enigma she was she was the gay icon of arcadia (laughs) bay like i saw her and i was like that's a gay that's one right there yeah and before yeah it seemed like she just had sorry go on no i could tell you not it's you um yeah so um she, it seemed like she had like she had this such a swagger about her, and you're just like, wow, I would die for this incredible gay icon. But then it, it's really nice to kind of see her, because how I am towards Chloe in Life is Strange, that's how kind of how Chloe is about Steph in Before the Sun. The way she's like, oh, she's so cool. She loves girls. She kisses girls. Wow, how cool. She's my icon. <laughs> and like I think uh, like I think a lot of gay people have kind of been through that where when you were younger, you knew that one out gay person. You're like, God, I wish it could be like them. God, I wish yes. that were me. <laughs> Stop that meme. <laughs> it's, it's like seeing Chloe in Before the Storm is just reminds me of myself, how I was. Yeah. Just, so it was so it's so cute to see her like like when Rachel's like talking and I'm like that I see myself. I'm like, oh, that's me. Chloe is me. When I, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, and it's just so because that's how like kind of how Max was towards Chloe. And yeah, it's, mm-hmm. it's weird to see. It's so weird. I love it though. It's nice. It's refreshing. And the way she's it like really when is. to to Rachel, where she has two of the gay panic moments in Life is Strange and Before the Storm, when uh, Max starts undressing in the pool and she looks away because she's like, oh no, I am gay. And then before the storm, when she, like, I don't know which option you pressed, but I went in and gave Rachel her belt because I... I did too. Gay. Yeah, I was like... Did um, too. Um, so, and then Chloe's, like, looking away there again. I'm just like, when will this gay baby get a break in her life? <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't prepared for any of that. No. The hit her, like, right in the face and then just mm. stayed on her face. <laughs> over face. It's uh. I'm losing it. <laughs> I should have I should have known that this would just uh like turn into price for the box. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just. Oh. No, it's uh, it's it's par for the course. <laughs> yeah. I've I've been waiting for this episode my entire life. <laughs> I think it makes sense too. I mean, it's like the topic we're talking about. It wouldn't even be what we're talking about if it weren't for that main relationship there. So mm-hmm. this is going to sound a little bit weird, but um, 
This is Life is Strange was actually the first game for me to actually have representation because like anything that I've seen beforehand was um, same was mainly just mm-hmm. you know just based off stereotypes and exaggerations of character. Right. And then like yeah. after like I seen Life is Strange, I was like, um, I was like, this is really good writing. And, mm-hmm. and um, it even led me to like even better and like to like um, a lot of more re- representation with um, Legend of Korra, kind of like oh, blanked God. on there. Fuck good series. <laughs> like I think Life is Strange really opened the door for me. Oh yeah. Last like, of Us kind of showed me the door, but then Life is Strange kicked the door the fuck down. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm right there with you. I was furious about The Last of Us being gay for The Last of Us Part 2, but we won't go into them, because that's a different game. But hit me up if you want to hear about them, because I have so many. <laughs> All around <Yeah>. Tumblr. Um, <laughs> Not sponsored. And Twitter. I think, uh, I think yeah, like, it, it's... Okay, like, going back to it, you know, it's... It's, norm, it's like, normalized... Uh, this and it's not like uh like jamie you said it's not some stereotype you know because it's like yeah. in a lot of other a lot of other media still um you know if there is like a homosexual character um they're like fucking dandies you know or they're like super stereotypical mm. um <laughs> like <laughs> fucking uh mac and dennis in uh the always sunny the the be- always yeah sunny. Yeah. yeah. But, yes. <laughs> um, but or, you know, like if there's like a bisexual character, they're just like, like it's just all they think about is sex, and like all, you know, yeah. it's just it's really like these kind of like grotesque stereotypes of it, and uh, it still happens. Like even in like um, in Persona Five, which I love that game, but like the one like instance of homosexual characters they're like basically stalkers and they're like harassing um ruji and uh it's it's really it sucks it sucks um so i think it's a i think it's a good step forward to and i think it shows too if you look at as much as i hate capitalism but if you look at like the commercial success of life is strange and you say, hey, this fucking works. Like, look at how well it did. Look at how, like, it's following, like, fucking loves it. Um, you know, it, like, normalize non-hetero characters. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, it, like you said, it's honest. It's real. It's, it's not phoned in. Right. And I'm, like, I'm willing to bet that at least half, maybe more, of the community for, like, the fans of Life is Strange are LGBT+. plus. I'm willing to bet it. I sincerely hope so, because they're a very small minority if they're not. There's... Yes. Yeah. I've talked to quite a few people from the community, and I'm not going to out I'm saying the names, but I have talked to them about that part of it, and they are in that... M- um, part of the community, which is great. Yeah. And kind of throwing off a little bit of a segment, there, I just thought of something which, um, when me, um, I think it was my and my from the uh, Life of Strange fans and Joey and was it Garrett? We're watching through um, Legend of Korra. Yeah, I think so. I think yeah. you watched it with us. I, I watched. I watched like a few bucks and. We got to the, uh, the the very very last scene, because I, I knew what happened because of my friend Vince um, basically was just running out about it for like five years. Um, but I think we spent like half an hour just screaming afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> just imagine I... like actual screaming, like literally <laughs> that half an hour of screaming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I remember finishing uh, The Legend of Korra, which was in the summer of two... I can't remember. It wasn't that long after Life is Strange finished. 
But I remember watching it and seeing the last episode, and I was in. I was like, I was so like, I'd hate to say the word shook, but I was shook because <laughs> I was seriously. I can't even get over Same how much fam. I loved um, the the Legend of Aang when I was younger. It was like my number one TV show. So to see like this show that I'd loved so much as a kid and like look at it now and be able to be like, fuck, that's that I'm gay. That's this character is queer, <laughs> I'm queer, and I'm like, and that I could have had that as a child, and it's like there now, and I'm, it's, I'm, I'm it makes me so proud. It, like, I don't, I can't describe it. It's just a really fulfilling feeling. Mm-hmm. It's just has yeah, anyone it's so nice. Pardon? Has oh, anyone? Oh. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't. I, I can hear you, over Sean's clapping. Sorry. <laughs> has anyone what? Red Turf Wars. It's uh, oh, the... a comic that takes place after the series finale. Oh, I have not yet. But... I, have not. I want to. It's amazing and so fucking gay. Oh, it's so <laughs> gay. Amazing. <laughs> I just can't I... believe. I would like to see better representation of non-binary people in video games. Hmm. Hmm. Because I'm not going to, like, throw a game under the bus. But there was one where you encounter someone who is trans and they out themselves. A trans person would, like, in real life, a trans person would never do that. Like, they'd be yeah. like, like, oh, by the way, I'm trans. Like, the first thing that the person says. <laughs> Hi, I just met you and this is crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, I know. What, I know what you're talking about. Uh, I think. I don't know what game this is, but so if someone could tell me afterwards, please let me know. Um, I think that it's something that is, you know, a good step forward that, that needs to be taken. Um, I commendable that they wanted to include that, but inclusion isn't enough if it's not like done well mm. and the thing is the studio did it did a better job with a previous game oh, i really want to know what game it is now is it, it uh, all right? i mean do i just go on ahead and say yeah it? it's mass yeah. effect andromeda. it was mass effect andromeda that kind of threw it uh. under the but then dragon age inquisition had a trans person in there and they like did such a much be- such a better job. I have heard good things about Dragon Age Inquisition, but I just have not had, had the time. Uh, I wonder if it was different. Well, yeah, it had it was different development teams, right? Because I don't it think was, the, yeah, the, it was still aware though. Yeah, I don't think it was the same. Yeah, yeah, I, I can see what you mean though. I am I'm actually curious what character was that in Inquisition because I played Inquisition, but I don't know Prim. if I. Who was it? Prim. Prim. Grim. Oh. He's like oh, part yeah. of Iron Bull's mercenary gang. Oh, right. Okay, I remember. I do remember that. I've never, uh, I've never played Dragon Age. Any of Me them? Me neither. Uh, Me either. <laughs> John, you're missing out on like so much amazing gayness. I know, I've seen GIFs everywhere. I have a friend who cosplays from it, I believe, and uh, I just, I, I'm poor. I can't afford to buy video games. Oh. <laughs> the only thing I have seen, like, relate to anything Dragon Age, um, is like, a 28 minute Let's Play of from Monster Factory. That's like the only thing I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> Monster Factory is a good representation of any game. Yeah. DJ Slime Time. <laughs> anyway, we we are really um, just mm-hmm. going on many tangents here. <laughs> we should probably know. Just uh. Well, I feel like the community itself is also one of the best representations of LGBTQ plus. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. without a doubt. Just the people. And everything, all the content, the fan art, the fan fictions, it's just kind of a wellspring of queerness. 
that yeah. is very positive. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think like if you examine the themes, not just not just you know the queer themes, but also like just the tacklings of mental illness and all that. Like it is, it is a very welcoming uh, game. Oh to, yeah. And like, so it's good. It's good that the people that are fans of it understand that and kind of pay that forward um, to other people and like welcoming in the community. Well, I try when in my stories, I try to tackle both sexuality and mental illness because I want to like go as much with the themes that were used in the game as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have, we'll have, uh, links in the description for, um, do you have an AO3 page or? No, I have fanfiction.net still, sadly. Okay. Well, we'll have a, we'll have a link up. Me too. If, uh, <laughs> for folks to read your stuff. Uh, and as someone who has been a fan of Rowan's stuff for a very, very long time, Please go check out her stuff. Her writing is incredible. I like it. Well, I used to write fan fictions for Life is Strange, which we will not discuss because they're not good. But um, oh. Sean, you always is... say we can't discuss them, but you've brought them up so many times. We brought them up twice. <laughs> we brought them up twice. Um, uh, but yeah, uh, Rowan's writing is really beautiful, and I I'm very inspired by her work and everything that she does. So big shout um, out to her. Well, I also have a shout out to give to someone who was kind of my partner in crime with the project, and that was Summerfell Draws Woo. and web comic What If, which was kind of a post season one story of what might have happened after the game. Mm. Mm. And that's on Tumblr. It's very good. Also check nice. out. I believe we've used uh, some of Summerfell's art on the show, too. I'm a fan. I've seen a lot of their stuff. Uh, I don't know if I've read What If, though. I don't think I have. I don't it's go to Tumblr much. What If the Comic dot tumblr dot com and we also have like an original song by poet oh nice oh, that's cool yeah. I'll make sure to put that in the description as well <laughs> check it out um, so we've got some we actually got quite a few uh submissions of things people would like to say and uh we will start with those after a short word from our sponsor have you guys like ever been so hungry that you just could not even function yeah i'm really hungry right now oh, all the time yeah. David. Mention it? every yeah. day yeah. me right now yeah i'm pretty hungry too as like, a talking uni about... student mm-hmm. yeah well you know you bring up a good point, Sean. As a uni student, like money's tight, uh, yeah. But there's actually, I know where I know where you guys can go. We should all go. Uh, great food, lots of it. Not very expensive. Two Wells Diner. Yes. Uh, I like, you know, they have some of the best burgers in town. Um, it's ranted and raved and. I, I'm a vegetarian, so I can't personally speak for their burgers, but I, the reviews speak for themselves. I can Five stars. You know, Joey, their uh, their Belgian waffle is to die for. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, and I, I heard and, the waitress is a lovely woman. Very <laughs> sweet. The waitress, like, oh, great. Yeah, the music in there is great as well. They got a nice jukebox there. And, you know, going back to the whole thing, if you don't have a lot of money, but, you know, you still want some cheap eats, tell them we sent you. Tom Blackwell podcast sent you, uh, and for a limited time up until October 11th, uh, you'll get 10 percent off any single item. So uh, that's again, Blackwell podcast. Just tell them we sent you. Yeah. 10 um, percent off any single item, wherever it be. Uh, offer valid at participating locations. Beans. Okay. All right. So. 
head on down to Two Wells Diner. Now let's uh let's get into these let's get into these letters. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so um, Aaron, have you got the first one ready? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I got it pulled up. I just um. Okay, just go ahead. Cool. Um, so this one is from Anonymous, uh, writing to Blackwell Podcast. Life is strange to help me become more comfortable with my homoflexible identity. The way Chloe didn't care about being a lesbian and says how she likes girls after getting over her boy toy phase, and even in Before the Storm, where she admits she has a crush on Rachel, definitely helped me. I always hated myself for my feeling towards girls because I felt like it or I wasn't normal for it, despite my family not being homophobic. Love is love, and I plan to come out soon. Life is strange just to thank for that. Well, awesome. Good luck. Good luck. Yeah, That's an uh, awesome. Yeah, and thank you for sharing thing. that, especially since you haven't come out. Yeah. I have really the good. biggest smile on my face. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It takes a lot of courage to do that, so more power to them. Mm-hmm. We'll be right behind them. All right. Yeah. Next one? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, um, so this one is from Anonymous, um, because we did say um, they can submit anonymously. Mm-hmm. So yeah, keep identity secret and all that. So they Is this via my blog? Yeah. By Sean's blog, cool. so thank you for providing these, Sean. Oh no, I was just curious which uh, was coming from. Oh so, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm just going to quote exactly how it's said, okay? <laughs> um, so this is how. Uh, Lol, like I'm gay, but I didn't realize I was gay. But like Chloe and Max, like edging uh, towards each other, was so beautiful, and I was, um, I was like, oh. This explains the emotions I've had um, towards others, so I realized I was gay. Gay in, the, uh, in this case is bisexual, which I guess why I was confused. And you're supposed to read this funny subconsciously in your head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Almost as well crafted as anything I say on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm actually going to read. Uh, Someone just said, um, you know, thanks to Life is Strange, they realized they were pan. Mm-hmm. Um, which, again, you know, is like I said, it's like a cool thing when you, like, you come to learn yourself a little bit better because of something like that. And then, uh, try to, okay. Uh, so the next one is a, a two parter. Um, So a few winters ago, I had a really hard surgery, and I isolated myself from all my friends, and I lost my support system, which were all my gay friends. I was completely alone, and my depression got very bad. I sort of off and on talked to them, but I was incredibly isolated. I live in the Midwest, and no no one LGBT IRL. One of my friends told me to check out this game, Life is Strange, and I did, and I ended up making so many important friends and reconnecting with so many important people in my life, one of which is my girlfriend, who was the person who told me about Life is Strange. Life is Strange helped me so much with my identity and how it relates to trauma. Seeing Max go through everything she did and come out on the other side still loving and caring for Chloe meant so much to me. And the relationship really struck home for me and allowed me to accept myself as a gay person living in the Midwest. I'm still very much anxious about my identity and how others see me, but because of this game, I've really become a lot more confident and happy to be gay and love my girlfriend. So that's awesome. Uh, that is that's, awesome. the, that's really uh, awesome. And as someone who also lives in the Midwest, I definitely know how they feel. This is very wholesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Me... Yeah, it's really, it's really nice to hear. <laughs> does, does Sean not realize she's up? Yeah. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, how do I access this? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a mess. It's right. Okay, okay. Give me a second, I'm working on it. Suspense. 
Which which one are we on? The the, f- the uh, one that's after the three parter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Let me find. I'm sorry. It's the one right before <laughs> Verdurain. Ver Verdin Reigns. The one right before. Yeah. 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 Okay. Coming from an anonymous again. Regarding the Liz Life Strange podcasting, I don't know if there are any characters I'm I'm not aware of, but I think people in the asexual and aromantic aromantic I don't know how to say that. Aro- aromantic. Aromantic. <laughs> don't judge me, okay? <laughs> um Spectrum should be represented. I for myself consider myself both of these things, but that just means that I have I value my platonic friendships more, I guess. It's hard to find Arrow Ace um, representation anywhere, really. And no, I don't count Big Bang Theory as good representation. Amen to that last bit. <laughs> I don't count Big Bang Theory as good anything. <laughs> yes. I, I think that depending on the way you portray Max, her sexuality can be left open to any interpretation. I myself oh, yeah. identify as asexual. So, like, I saw a lot of myself in Max in terms of that. Because you can still kiss someone in the Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, yeah, this, I sh- this is, like, I'm speaking on behalf of, like, my best friend in the entire world. Uh, um, she wouldn't mind if I mentioned it because she's my, my girl. Um, but she's also asexual, and I know that she also found some little stuff within characters like Max and not so I don't know if she mentioned it but I know some people kind of had a headcanon of uh, Kate being asexual as well so that's it, I guess like everything's up to interpretation and if you can find that kind of thing within a character it's really nice and fulfilling and rewarding to be able to see that but I, I totally agree there's not enough representation for it and the Big Bang Theory doesn't do representation for anything, any justice. It's a no. terrible show. <laughs> <laughs> Just that, show. that show. My Did family you? loves that show. And oh yeah, mine, mine do too. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a show for people who know nerds. Like it's, yeah, it's not. It's like yeah, oh, it's not. My cool son says some of those things, or like my my nephew you know, says some of those words, and. Mm. Uh, and then, uh, like, oh, hey, you like video games. B- Bazinga, pal, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if I never hear Bazinga again, that would be amazing. So, <laughs> this might sound a little bit sad, but... Oh, do you I like t- Big Bang Theory? I tend to watch it just to, just to, like, pull references and see if they get them right or wrong, and mostly it's wrong. Oh. And they just laugh <laughs> just at how wrong they get it. I should I should like, say I, I I should say if you enjoy the show if that's your thing like yeah no 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 insults to you yeah. <laughs> uh, insults to the show but no insults to you you know like I I like in, you're free to enjoy what you enjoy especially if, if it doesn't hurt anyone yeah. of course but uh, so let me just let me just <laughs> throw that out there <laughs> We're just a very vocal <laughs> community. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, that is a valid point. Um, I know Geek Remix, they've, um, Mari and Stacy have mentioned, uh, I cannot remember the name of the game, but there's a game that, uh, supposedly had, like, some pretty good, um, Ace Arrow, uh, characters in it. I saw it on Twitter. I don't, I didn't, like, commit it to memory, unfortunately. But, uh, so there's at least one that's out there, <laughs> but there could definitely be a lot more. <laughs> yes, it <laughs> could be better. Um, Sean, I w- also wanted to call out the point you made about Kate, um, because you said uh, something along the lines of it may not be, but if that's what you get out of it, um, I think that's important because it doesn't invalidate how you feel or how you relate to the character. Um, it's sort of like art in that way and that it can be somewhat subjective and just because like if it's, you know, I don't want to put it this way, but if it's not canon or, uh, if, if that wasn't the original intention, it can still serve people in a real way. So I, I just thought that was a good point you made. Mm-hmm. 
you're better at words than I am, but that's what I was trying to get across. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I'm up next, right? Yep. Um, I was just looking over it, Sean, and part of this person's uh, post is like clipped out. They're in two parts, but there's a third part in the middle. Um, that we that I don't have oh. to show. Yes, that is my fault. That's right. Um, uh, I do remember what they were discussing. Um, they were just discussing uh, about how um, a lot of the men in Max's lives are like, uh, like in the nightmare sequence. I'm paraphrasing. In the nightmare sequence, uh, there's the whole, the whole war, Warren being like, "Go ape," and it's kind of seen as like a threat or like. So it shows Max having a disinterest within like the men in her life or like seeing them as like a bit too much and like I can't remember what they said but that's had something to do with that. <laughs> do you have would, uh, do you have any way to pull up the Yeah, would you just wanna like copy and paste me like the text so I can just read it there or send me a yeah, link to the page it's on? Uh yeah I will oh, get a screenshot for you now. Okay. I will go through the deep depth dark depths of my inbox. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, like, <laughs> the cracking of, of Skype added to this dramatic effect. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, is is, everyone is, Skype, or is it someone in particular? Uh, it, I think it's, it's just Skype. Sh- or it might be <laughs> Skype, yeah. Yeah, um, it's probably just me. Um, <laughs> Is this the anonymous one that starts off with, I don't know if this is what you were looking for, but for the no. podcast... This <laughs> is Bird and Rains. Bird and Rains. Oh, that's very also, <laughs> dark and deep down, um, but Joey, I'll find it. I just looked into um, that game from Geek Remix. Mm-hmm. What I kind of pulled up was something about, was it Maya from Borderlands? Uh, that's mentioned. I know, I know, uh... And I think it's Tales from the Borderlands. Or maybe, maybe maybe it's Borderlands 2. I'm not sure. I know uh, Anthony Birch like specifically wrote one character as Arrow or Ace. Um, I don't but think, there was another game. I don't think Maya ever makes an appearance in Tales, so I don't okay. know if it's covered there. It might be covered in the... Um, and Borderlands 2, throughout the game, you pick up uh, recordings that kind of shed some light on the on the Vault Hunters, like, pasts, and it might be spoken about in Maya's. Okay. I found it, and I have sent it to the okay. WhatsApp group. It okay. was sending. But there was another, uh, there was another game, aside from Borderlands, that... I could, I could also just be wrong. <laughs> That's, that happens a lot. More than I'd like to admit. More right. than I will admit. Okay. Uh, so next up, we have uh, a entry from user Verdon Reigns. And they say, uh, identify, I identify as a demisexual NB lesbian. I, I don't know the term, monology. Non-binary. So I think non-binary, non-binary, that's what I was going to say. Uh, I identify as a demisexual non-binary lesbian. Back when I first played the game, I identified as bi slash cis girl, and I really related to Max and how she could romance Chloe or Warren. My first girlfriend was a lot like Chloe, and playing through the game made me relive a lot of that relationship, not gonna lie. Personally, I have a headcanon that Max is more into men, more into women than men, because the nightmare has a particularly gendered fear. Uh, all of the men in the, all of the people in the maze in the nightmare are men from the series, wherein is there is a threat. His locker is full of things fetishizing Max, so I feel like that's, like that represented her fear from relationships with men. Personally, to play the game as Max would, personally, to play the game as Max would want to, I think she would end up kissing Chloe and hugging Warren in the final episode. To be honest, my headcanon is that Max would grow to identify as a lesbian, or by slash pan with a feminine preference. Uh, let me get the next part. Uh, in terms of how it helped me, I just felt so happy to see 
romantic scenes between two girls in a video game. It was so nice to feel representative, represented. When I was growing up, I had a childhood best friend, and our relationship was really similar to Max and Chloe's. It took playing that game to help me realize that that was my first crush. And that's the end. All right, thanks, Bird and Reigns. Um, I think, again, going back to that whole thing, like, it's, it's, it's cool when, and I would argue, like, the importance of art is that it helps people realize who they are. Right. And so I'm very, uh, very elated to hear that. Nice. Um, <clears throat> I'll bring up the next one. Uh, this one is from Anonymous. Uh, I fell in love with Chloe, and I think Life is Strange helped me get through realizing I was a lesbian. The kiss scene was one of the only times I've been able to be explicitly gay in a video game, and I was honestly shocked when I found out some people didn't kiss her. I think the whole thing was kind of normalizing to me. Like if Chloe loved girls, it was okay for me to as well. I finally felt the same way as another person. Fuck yeah. Aww. <laughs> yeah, that was sweet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, okay, the next one is from Anonymous again. Um, I had been struggling with my identity for a while when Life is Strange first came out. I knew I was trans, but I was afraid um, and in the closet. Didn't even have a name picked out for myself. Life is Strange really helped me figure out who I was, and I fell in love with the story and the characters very quickly. Due to heavily relating to Chloe, I took the name for myself. My close friends are super supportive. Every time someone calls my name, it just feels right. Oh my god, that is the sweetest I, thing. I love that. I Chloe, if you are listening to this, you are fucking awesome. <laughs> we love you. Just just hearing that makes me so like happy, because I'm currently in the closet being a trans man, but just hearing all these wonderful things that these people are saying it just brings so much warmth into my heart. Yeah, definitely. That's the community. And it, yeah, and it's like, it's rewarding to hear these kind of things and to share each other's stories because, like, they meant, uh, like, a couple of people have mentioned, um, uh, it made the seeing these characters made them feel like a normal person and, like, they're just like everyone else. Um, and it, that's what it's like for us to sit exactly. here and discuss it and tell those stories. It's like, we we get it and it's nice to to be able to share and it's a, that feeling and it's about a safe this. environment. Yeah. I almost took Chloe as my middle name, but I ended up just going with Rowan. It's also good. <laughs> yes. Very good. Uh, sorry, I stabbed myself with a push pen and I'm uh, <laughs> oh no! Um, so I'm going to I'm going to read the one that was uh, submitted to me personally, the anonymous one, so that I don't like double up. So I'm going to read like what I what I have um, here, and then uh, um, Sean, you can read the last the last one that was submitted to you. Yep. Um, so this is uh just submitted honestly. Uh, one thing I have learned being a closeted bisexual guy is how silly labels are. People are too unique, awesome, and indescribable to be summed up with any word. In many ways, I don't consider myself to be closeted. When people ask me if I am, I simply respond with, I am me. Seeing topics like this blend with rewind powers help me come to that realization. A personal nuance runs too deep for us to summarize others, or even ourselves. So yeah, that, uh, very nice words to say. Yeah. Very poetic. Um, and yeah, you know, like there is like, I think the good side of labels is that it kind of helps you like categorize for yourself and figuring out who you are because I feel like you can go your whole life and never like and still learn things about yourself and because also we change, you know. Um, so like, I hated mustard when I was a kid and I love mustard now like that like. Um, so I think like 
that's the good side of labels, but it's very tenuous and um and there's so much like you know, nuance, like the submission said, there's so much nuance to everything that like uh labels can be they can be quite unnecessary or you know, like I I, I think I think it's like depending on the power that a person finds in it, but I will say that uh, it's like you shouldn't use labels to denigrate other people. Like, you know, like if someone identifies as queer, uh, something like that. Like, you shouldn't use them using that label, like as a as a denigration. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, there is there is a lot of a lot of nuance, a lot of complexity to humans. Humans. Yeah. Us no. humans. Human being. yeah. beans. Beans. Oh, no, no beans. <laughs> um, oh, I'm sorry. Were you eating them? <laughs> no, I was eating those beans. Are you fucking insane? <laughs> I was eating those beans. Um, no. Uh, so I think this is the this is the final submission. Yeah. I believe so. Um. This is what someone submitted. Uh, I'll never be able to put into words how much I appreciate Life is Strange and how it has actually impacted my life for the better. It being LGBTQ plus is really meaningful to me. The most important factor being that it was for, it was the first LGBTQ plus game that I'd ever known of and the first real bisexual representation I'd seen anywhere. As a person who had just realised she was bi and still not openly, it meant the world to me seeing the, the theme being handled so well so beautifully and to be able to feel that at home uh the way they included the lgbtq plus theme was done done wonderfully too the fact that their sexual orientation wasn't the big deal of the story made it that much more real and normal and that means the world thank you signed elena elena is absolutely right uh it's not even though it's there and all that it's not like the main like uh like focus of it it's just a normal thing like it's just a very normal Mm -hmm. like uh this is a story about these characters and the things that they're going through who also happen to be and i think that's i think that's like i think that's awesome for me personally because um you know your your sexuality uh can be largely uh, like a large part of your identity but it's not who you are um, it's not like, at least for me personally, like, it's not who I am. I'm just like, uh, you know, well, I'm me. I'm like fucking really dumb and all that, but it's like, I'll, I also happen to, uh, be by. Um, so like, it's the not having, not having the characters where like their entire focus of their character is their sexuality, I think is a good thing because, if you look at if you look at like heterosexual uh, characters, it's not like their whole thing is not that they're straight, you know. It's like they yeah. have these multitudes to them, and they also happen to be straight. And I think like you need to like that's that's what we need is like these characters with multitudes to them, with like very complex, um, who don't always do everything right, very human, hmm. very normal, who also happen to be queer. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and kind of on the flip side of that as well, um, it can also be really nice to have a gay character that they're gay. They're, that's who they are. That's a part of who they are. That's a part of their identi- identity, and they're owning it. Like, for example, see, like Steph, um, mm-hmm. with, we know about her straight away that she, she likes kissing girls and that she's interested in women. Um, and like for me personally, I don't know. I, when I read that, I was, I was like shocked and happy because I was some, really happy to hear that. Yeah, like because sometimes uh, in the media people do kind of beat around the bush and they're like, well, I don't know, it's it's maybe, maybe not, and um, which is obviously really nice scene as well because you don't need you don't need to have a label, but then if for like from someone. The, for me personally, uh, for someone who very much is proud of being a gay woman and owning that, and sorry, my two nose piercings are caught in each other, um, <laughs> uh, and kind of, kind of, <laughs> this is not 
not a good time. Um, uh, so seeing Steph, that's like she's so, and it's some that's something that Chloe idolizes about her uh, because it's something that I idolize about myself. Um, that I'm I'm not afraid of who I am because I spent a very long time feeling that way about myself, and mm. now I'm like I'm gay. Fight me about it. Um, so <laughs> move on, gay. Yeah. Yeah, and I like like you said, um, different people find different comforts in different things. Some people don't feel the need to label themselves, and some people find a sense of pride in that. And I think that's very lovely. Yes, as a trans woman, I take pride in identifying myself as a trans woman, and I think that there is a strength in in that label. Yeah. Of course. But it doesn't have to own you at the same time. So, like, whether it's gender or sexuality, you know, whether mm. you're closeted or whether you're open, just own who you are. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Just be you. Yep. You do yeah. you, boo. <laughs> unless unless uh, that's being an asshole to other people. <laughs> don't yes. don't do that. But I don't think that. Yeah, in which case, just, get lost. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's 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 a fair point and uh, eloquently put. Yeah. I don't know if it was eloquently, but I'll take it. Um. So thank you, thank you very much, um, for everyone who submitted, and you know there is there is a lot to say on this topic. Uh, I hope. I hope we did some service to it. Um, I know, I know it can be very touchy, especially in today's current climate. Uh, but I, I do hope that we did some justice to it. There is so much to say on it. It's, it's a very like human sexuality, human identity, um, and even the concept of identity to get philosophical is very complex it's very there's so many so many like just platitudes of of discussion there and you know the fact that people get doctorates in this type of thing and still learn new things is it just really goes to show you um but i think rowan you know what you said just be yourself is excellent excellent words to end the topic on yeah yes yeah. Uh-huh. Well said. I try. <laughs> so that should wrap up the discussion. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh if you if you have something you want to say in the comments, make sure it's civil. Mm-hmm. Uh make sure it's not disparaging. Uh but yeah, I mean like this is something this is something that's very near and dear to a lot of people and all that, so wanna, I think the discussion of it is good. And we want to be respectful. Mm-hmm. Just, uh, like with all things, keep in mind you are talking to other human beings. Even though you are in the comfort of your own home or behind your screen, there's still other beings, other human beings on the other end. So, be, uh, just, damn it, I forgot the fucking... <laughs> Bill and Ted <laughs> quote. <laughs> oh, That's what I was going for. To be righteous to each other? I don't know. Be excellent anyway. to each other. Be excellent. Yeah, oh my yeah. god. How did I fuck it up again? Okay. Joey. Anyway. I know. How I could know. you fuck up Bill and Ted? I know, I'm the worst. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So, just be cool. Keanu Reeves forgives you. <laughs> so... Let's get into some housekeeping first. But before we do, thank you so much for joining us, um, Rowan and Danny. We really appreciate you um, just coming yeah. on and just talking about your experiences. Mm-hmm. And uh, I feel sorry honored. for making you wait. I feel very honored as well. Yeah, it was cool for you guys to come on. Yeah. Pleasure to have you. Okay, so um, let's get right into housekeeping. Um, damn it, I was gonna do something really fucking stupid. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, fucking, I was gonna say we're still taking submissions for the, 
LGBTQ episode. <laughs> I didn't realize. I've been saying it for so long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, we're still taking questions um, for Kylie Brown, the voice of Rachel Amber. Um, <laughs> I think we said the deadline was the 10th. Yes, we did say that. Okay. I just I just need to remind myself of that. Um, so send those questions in through email blackwellpodcast@hotmail.com. Um, mm-hmm. Direct message to us at Blackwell PDcast, all that all that good stuff. We'll put the links in the description where you can submit questions. Uh, if you email it, subject line it with um, Kylie. Yep. So we know because of some stuff. So make sure you subject line it with who the question is for. Mm-hmm. So, speaking of stuff, let's get right into this announcement, huh? Um, mm-hmm. So we kind of teased us out. Um, I made we made a little tweet of some of some um, some some dice. So let's talk about maybe some next. of you uh, maybe some of you passed your your insight check, your perception check, and figured it out. Yeah. So <laughs> on the twenty first of October, we are gonna have none other than Katie Bench, the voice of Steph herself. On the show. Yay! Yay! Yay. I'm so excited! <laughs> <laughs> I love Steph so much! So, um, we're gonna prioritize questions. So, we're first, um, we're gonna prioritize on questions for Kylie first, and then we're gonna, um, well, we'll still accept questions for, um, for Katie right now, but, um, Joey, words, please. Yeah, uh, that's why I said, like, the subject line is important, so we know that, uh, who it's going to, so if you want, like, uh, I will say, I will say, let's just say, uh, um, if you don't, if you don't have a, so, I hate to be so, uh, dramatic, no, I don't, I'm a very dramatic person, uh, <laughs> but anyway, if you don't have a subject line, uh, your, your question probably will be ignored, so just make sure you have, um, a subject line in the email. Uh, Kylie for, um, Kyla Brown, voice of Rachel, or Kitty Benz, the voice of Steph. So, um, let's set a deadline for those questions, and we'll go for the 17th. Yep. So, you have the 17th of October to set the, uh, send those questions in. So, and yeah, that's that um, wraps up the episode um, for housekeeping, except for our Patreon page. Yeah. Uh... And we have some new donors, and our current top donor is none other than Rowan herself. Mm-hmm. Yay! All right. Yay. Thank you, Rowan. <laughs> Thank Go you Rowan. so much. So, I'm just uh, happy to help. So any money, um, kind of, it kind of goes full circle a little bit, right, Jerry? Because any um, money that we make by um, subscriptions or anything will be donated to the Trevor Project. Right. Uh, so. Right now we're looking at two dollars a month to the Trevor Project, which is better than zero dollars a month. Uh, but a, a huge thanks to the fact that now, like, we're covered. Mm-hmm. Um, like, we're not we're not bleeding our bleeding our wallets yeah. um, anymore. So, uh, just a huge thanks to all patrons. Um, and now that we can do charitable contributions, um, and you know, like. At this point, too, like, uh, if it's something like you saying, well, why don't I just give to charity? Do. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, um, speaking of, uh, should we talk about Extra Life or should we wait a little bit? Uh, we're doing Extra Life again this year, which mm-hmm. I think we've mentioned. Yeah. Uh, uh, should we save the date or should we save it for a little bit? Uh, we can go ahead and set the date. Okay, so the date for our extra live stream is the 25th of November. Yeah, so we're gonna start yeah, boy. getting oh, some boy. guests. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're gonna start rounding up some giveaways. Uh, last year we raised three thousand two hundred and ninety-two dollars. Yep, just under thirty-three hundred. Uh, Damn. let's see if we can beat that this year. Mm-hmm. Let's go for it. Um, should we say what's something uh, about the special thing that's happening on the stream? Yeah. Okay, so, um, myself and Joey have been doing this podcast for over two years now, which is crazy. 
mm-hmm. but the extra life stream is going to be the first podcast related thing that me and Joe will be doing in the same room. Yeah, which is really fucking exciting. I'm, I'm really <laughs> yeah. pumped for that. It's really cool. Very exciting stuff, guys. Get psyched. Um, follow us very closely, I will say, over the next few weeks on social media and episodes, uh, because we got a lot going on, and I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna really like it. You're gonna love the way you look. I guarantee it. <laughs> <laughs> like on the scribble. Yeah. Um, is that is that trademark or something? We should totally use that. No, it is. It might even oh. might even uh, it's a men's warehouse. I don't know. Why. No. I just I can't I can't exist. I can't have a train of thought that isn't like I'm just such a fucking referential piece of shit. I'm caught up in a men's warehouse. Like, I can't have a train of thought that doesn't. Ugh, I hate myself. Anyway, uh, yeah, follow us very closely, mm-hmm. and because we have a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon. Um, we will see everybody next week. Um, with our discussion on Awake Park 2. Yeah. Ooh, also, gorgeous. just a quick little thing. I am still attending October MCM London Comic Con. I will be there as Chloe. Mm-hmm. So if anyone is going, come say hi. Yeah. Should be our representative, our Blackwell podcast representative at MCM. <laughs> yeah. I unfortunately can't make it. Our so. on location reporter. <laughs> Yeah, just inflate on me, dudes. So, uh, Sean and Alejandro um, will be there. So make sure you go say hello to the both of them. Say hello. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much you love the show. Mm-hmm. Uh, tell them how much you love us. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell Sean to tell me that you said hi. Yeah. Uh, and that you think about me a lot. <laughs> come, <laughs> come bring me uh, endless amounts of photos of Steph. Yeah. <laughs> Sean, if you see some good cosplayers, yeah, l- get some get some uh, everyday hero submissions in there. Yeah. Of course, my dudes. With that said, we'll see everybody next week. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye guys. Bye.